you for touching us and stirring us up uh, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Um, as I was preparing for this uh, uh, message the other day, I had two things on my heart uh, and before I went to bed and I was praying about uh, a woman, I believe she was in her eighties and she had been in a hospital room and unresponsive for several days. And the doctors were uh, about to send her to hospice and just let her go on uh, into the next world. But uh, she's been an atheist all her life. And so her uh, daughter uh, had uh, asked us to pray for her. You know, it's not, uh, it's not right to let, uh, let your mother go to a devil's hell and spend eternity in a devil's hell. And there she was in the hospital room and unresponsive. And uh, uh, so that night when I went to, to bed, those were the two things on my mind, the message, this message, and uh, that woman. And so at 1.30 in the morning, a few days ago, the Lord woke me up and said, tipping point. And uh, I didn't know what that meant. So I got up and prayed about it. And in a, a little while, I, I wrote a text message to these two daughters who are Christians and to their uh, husbands uh, who are uh, uh, Christians. And so I wrote this text message to uh, those four people. And although they live hundreds of miles from here, I knew their situation. And I said, when you come into unity and agreement on your mother's uh, life and salvation, this will be a tipping point uh, and, and change her life. Mm -hmm. And so I sent that text message out that morning at three o'clock. And that's also then uh, what I want to talk about today, the tipping point. What, what is the tipping point? Well, what happened in the, in the mother's uh, uh, situation? There she was for several days, uh, unresponsive in a hospital bed. And the doctors were about to send her to hospice. And uh, then uh, when that uh, four people, when those four people got into agreement and got in, and I was in agreement with them for the mother's life and salvation, then that was a tipping point. And two days later, she became responsive. Amen. And uh, uh, another day, she was moved from uh, critical care to a normal room. And uh, now the doctors are saying that uh, everything can be corrected and that she'll live at least 10 more years. Hallelujah. So uh, what I want you to see, that was the tipping point when they came into agreement and unity about the mother, about her salvation. And even though she was an atheist, I believe that God has given her this time uh, to, to so come to him, to uh, receive salvation, to receive Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. So what I want to talk about in the message tonight is a tipping point. It turns out that a tipping point is very important. Uh, we're going along on a particular path uh, and we have a goal, uh, but, the, but the path is not on the trajectory to reach the goal that we want. The goal is way up here. We're on a path. Uh, and, and so we have to change our uh, path and our trajectory so that we can actually reach the goal, reach the miracle. So the title then tonight is a Tipping Point for a Miracle. Hallelujah. And we all need miracles in our life. And what is a miracle? A miracle is an intervention yeah, by God, yeah, a divine yeah. intervention. And so we want uh, miracles and not, may, not, not just one, but multiple miracles. And uh, today we may want a miracle and uh, a few days later, we might, may want a different kind of miracle. So to have, to reach this miracle, we need to make a change. And, and there's a lot of different ways to make these changes so that we get on the right path and we release unstoppable force, an unstoppable mm. force so that we will reach our miracle. And that's exactly what happened in the life of that woman, that uh, when uh, her children got into agreement, and unity on her life and salvation. That was a tipping point in her life. And then she came out of the, out of the coma and mm -hmm. re became responsive. And is now the doctors are claiming you're going to live for at least 10 more years. So we need to know about a tipping point. And I have 
uh, three different main points I'm going to talk about on tipping points. There, there are a lot of different ones, but uh, the first type of tipping point is a prophetic utterance, a prophetic call to action. Yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes uh, you get a prophet uh, that speaks about something that's going to happen in the future, and it, it might not require much from you, but sometimes there is a call to action. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when a prophet gives you a call to action, you need to do that in order to receive your miracle. And uh, one of the first ones I want to talk about is 2 Kings 5, uh, beginning in verse 1. And this is about uh, Naaman. He was a general and uh, he had leprosy and he had, was very powerful and had lots of wealth and all. And, and so he uh, a little woman told him about uh, there was a prophet in uh, in uh, Israel that if he went there and the God in Israel that he would be healed from leprosy. So he finally got to the house of uh, Elisha, Elisha, and uh, Elisha sent word out to him: go uh, and dip in the Jordan River seven times, and your your skin will be restored and you'll be cleansed. Okay, that is the prophetic call to action. A prophet mm -hmm. gave it. It's a prophetic uh, utterance. And it was a call to action. He, did, he needed to do something. Yes. And uh, when uh, he got through uh, hearing what the prophet had said, he, he wasn't too happy about it. That's what happens a lot of time. People hear from the prophet and they don't like what they hear. And in this case, that's right. Uh, they, in this case, um, he was supposed to go to the Jordan River and dip, but he said, well, the rivers from my country are there. Are Much clean, cleaner. Clean and pure. I'd rather go there. And uh, and do I really have to do all of this? And his servant said, well, if it was a big thing, you would do it. Uh, so this is what the prophet has said. So let's just go ahead and do it. So they went down. Uh, he was a little reluctant on it, but he went down to the river. See, this is a call to action. It means you have to do something. He went down to the River Jordan and he dipped. Now, he dipped once and twice and three times and nothing happened. He dipped four times and five <laughs> times and six times. Nothing happened. And, and if he'd stopped right there, dipping six times, he would still have been disobedient to what God was telling him mm -hmm. to do. And he would not have gotten healed but he dipped seven times and when he came up the seventh time his skin was restored mm -hmm. and his body was cleansed from leprosy amen that is an example of a prophetic call and it was a, a tipping point a tipping point because he wasn't going to get a miracle uh without this and he needed to do this particular action and so we're all on a process and, and we're trying to get closer and closer to law to the lord and we have goals about miracles we need in our lives. And in this case, he needed to do what God told him to do through the prophet and, and that he, he got his miracle that way. Oh, so yeah. it's a change in trajectory. It's it's a, a you're going one way and now all of a sudden you're going in a different way. And now because you're obedient to God, uh, you've released uh, unstoppable forces that will cause the miracle mm, to come to pass. Let's look at another uh, example of a prophetic call. And this is uh, Mark chapter, I mean, John chapter nine, St. John chapter nine, uh, beginning again in verse one. And uh, in this case, uh, Jesus and his disciples go past a man who uh, was blind, who was born blind. And they had a discussion about that. And then uh, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And when he, after he got through saying that, he spit on the ground and he made uh, mud uh, mm -hmm. from the ground with his spittle and he and he put it on the eyes of the blind man uh, and now you could think well why didn't jesus do what he did in the other in the other gospels well he ran across a lot of blind men i think mm -hmm. he healed more blind men on specific things uh, than uh, perhaps any other type of infirmity uh, and and he never did this before and so uh, they could easily have said, well, sometimes you just spoke to people. Sometimes you just laid hands on their eyes and they were healed. Uh, but in this case, this is a prophetic call to action. And Jesus said to the man, uh, go to the pool of Siloam 
and wash, and, wash. And, and you'll come seeing. Okay, now the man could have argued with him and said, well, I, I was on my way to the Jordan River. I, I, I just uh, wash off my eyes in the Jordan River. Or I may just want to go home. But see, see, people in their mind, they begin to have a battle about what to do. But see, this is a prophetic call to action. And when you receive a prophetic call to action, you have to do precisely what has been to, told to you. And so he went to the pool of Siloam, and he washed, and he came see. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a miracle. But he could have sat there on that uh, road for the rest of his life and never uh, received his uh, healing and received his sight if he hadn't obeyed the prophetic calling. Now, uh, and that was a tipping point. And that was the tipping point in his life. He had to do exactly what the prophetic uh, call to action required him to do. Now, I myself am not a prophet, and I don't claim to be a prophet, but I am married to such a person. <laughs> and sometimes she gives people a prophetic call to action. And if they don't do it precisely, it's not going to happen. With Naaman, if he could, if he had stopped at six dippings, yeah, he would not have been healed. Or uh, when uh, Jesus told the blind man to go to the pool of Siloam, if he went to any other place and washed, it would not have worked. So with the prophetic word, there has to be obedience, uh, precise obedience to what is said. Well, let me let me give a scripture here. It yes. says, believe the Lord and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Because God's, God's prophets speak for, for him. They, they receive uh, their instructions uh, from him. And this prophetic call of action uh, is extremely important. And it comes not from that individual person, but it comes from uh, the father himself. So, okay. So I'm going to talk about three different types of tipping points. And so that you'll be aware of them, that they exist out there, that we're on a process, on a process and on a path but that may not get us to the goal of what we want. And the goal is a miracle. And I've seen in my lifetime, many people who loved the Lord and they were believing for their healing. And they were just on this trajectory that was too low, not high mm -hmm. enough to actually intersect with the goal they wanted. And they died. Uh, they needed a tipping point. They needed uh, someone uh, to help them or they needed to get a hold of God in such a way that they would release the unstoppable force that Hallelujah. would bring forth the miracle which they wanted. So that's you know I, I love that phrase, unstoppable force, because that means that no demon in hell can keep your miracle from you, or your healing from you. You know that means when it says unstoppable force, that only only the Lord has that that force hallelujah 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 okay the so may the force be with you may <laughs> the second type of tipping point i want to talk about is a proclamation i talked about a proclamation earlier um matthew 10 27 says uh what you hear whispered in your ear you proclaim <laughs> from the roof rooftops okay so i want to ask uh, has anyone uh, taking your ladder around to your house and and climbed, climbed up, up on your roof, roof and <laughs> proclaim something. Well, that's what a proclamation is. So if you get serious about it, you better get on the rooftop and proclaim what you've heard God say to you in the ear, what he what he's whispered to you. But there, you don't have to do it from the rooftop, and you can have some, the same effect. And a good example of that is uh, Elijah in First Kings. Uh, chapter 17 and and evidently he had been uh, spending time with the Lord and the Lord whispered something in his ear and so what he did he went to the king he went to Ahab mm -hmm. and said uh, before whom the Lord God before whom I stand uh, has instructed me to come here and I'm proclaiming that it will not there will not be due or rain in Israel except at my word now that's a proclamation and that's that's essentially doing it from the rooftop because he didn't just tell his brother or his mother he, he went to the king and let everybody know it's not going to rain 
Uh, we're going to have a drought in this country, and it's all because I have st stood in the presence of the Lord, and he's telling me uh, to proclaim this. And you think, well, why would the Lord want to uh, have a, a drought over Israel? Well, because they were so double-minded. They didn't know who God was. Uh, they were serving Baal, they were serving God, and that they didn't know. So in this case, God wanted to get their attention, and he sent Elijah out there to the king and said, it's not going to have do or right. reign in this nation until I say. Now, we don't know exactly from that how long it's going to be, but we found out in James chapter 5 that it was three and a half years. years. For three and a half years, there was neither do nor rain over the nation of Israel because we have a person who made a proclamation. Uh, now, uh, at the end of that uh, three and a half years, uh, he went again to Ahab. Uh, of course, there was something that went on in, in between, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and he went to Ahab and he said, now we're going to have, and now I'm in talking about uh, 1 Kings uh, 18, verse 41. Now he said, get up and, and get ready. It's going to have a great yeah, rain. Yeah, I hear a sound of abundance it's, of rain. It's going to be a great rain. And so, okay, so Elijah stopped the rain and he started the rain. Hallelujah. With a proclamation. And mm -hmm. there are things that God whispers in your ear that you need to proclaim from the housetop. Uh, you need to go to, uh, talk to the king, talk to the president, or whoever God sends you to. Make a proclamation, and you can stop the rain. You can control the weather. You can move mountains with your proclamation. Amen, amen. And uh, I've told you this story uh, before, but I want to bring it up here again because it fits. And that is uh, in... January the 8th, uh, 1993, Sherry had just been diagnosed by three doctors with a terminal cancer. They said that she would not live for six, six months. months. And uh, on January the 8th, I began teaching a series to a congregation uh, on healing. And, and, and that's a, 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 you see, there's a real contrast there. The doctor said, my wife's going to be dead in six months and I'm teaching that God is the healer and he always heals and heals every time and uh, he never withholds healing. Hallelujah. That's what I'm going to teach and yet they're saying she's going to die. So I made at the beginning of that teaching because I had heard from the Lord, I had been in a lot of prayer. Uh, Sherry had been in a lot of prayer during that time and one of the things I heard uh, as I was teaching uh, that I was heard as I was preparing to teach was I was to make a proclamation. And the proclamation I made was the doctors say my wife's going to die in six months. And I, but I say that she's going to stand and declare that she has been healed within mm -hmm. six weeks because I was going to teach about healing for six weeks. And I said, during this six week period, uh, sometime, uh, during this six-week period, she will stand and proclaim uh, that she has been healed. Okay, so what happened when I said that, Sherry? Uh, well, I think I, I've shared this before, but uh, as I was sitting there on the front row, I began to feel hot oil. start. It started at my head, and it went down uh, through my face and down through my body, all the way down through my toes. And then I was lifted, literally lifted off of the pew, and I was just dangling there. Uh, and then the Holy Spirit put me back down on the pew. But I knew then that the Lord had taken the cancer out of my body. Uh, I knew in my heart, just like the woman in, in Mark chapter five uh, with the issue of blood, she knew that she had been healed of her plague. And that's exactly what I felt in my heart. I knew then that the Lord had given me uh, the the miracle that I had asked for, and that was to destroy the the cancer. And so on that Friday, uh, we started on uh, January the eighth year, and, and then on that Friday, uh, the doctors did exploratory surgery on Sherry, and they came to her and said uh, three doctors that are, were in agreement that she had terminal cancer, but when we got in there, there was none. It had been taken Hallelujah. away. And Hallelujah. Jesus and Cherry said it was Jesus. Jesus took it away. Amen. So on the next uh, 
uh, then the next time I was going to teach, which was January the 15th, uh, she got up and stood and declared that Jesus had healed her. Amen. So the doctor said she's going to be de dead in six months, but the Lord told me to proclaim that she would stand and declare that she'd been healed within the six weeks, Hallelujah. which exactly, which is exactly what happened. Now, I didn't actually drag out my ladder at that point and get up on the housetop, but what I did do mm -hmm. was to mm -hmm. declare it and proclaim it to a congregation of people, and that's equivalent uh, to pulling out your ladder, and so. Well, let me, let me just add to okay. this that, that when I heard that proclamation come from, from Brother Fred, that was a tipping point for me. That was, it was like it solidified. Uh, even though I had already uh, heard, um, you know, the scripture in Psalms 118 that I should live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. This was a tipping point for me. And I took hold of it. And that's what we have to do with, with any miracle, with any healing in us in our bodies in our families in in our finances we have to take hold of it uh, and there's always a tipping point uh, that that tips you over uh, to 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 victory hallelujah okay. so uh, here's another person who made uh, some proclamations and that was Jesus you know when he came out of the wilderness it's been in time in the wilderness 40 days in the wilderness it wasn't because he was sick and it wasn't because he needed to hear from God he it was a lifestyle change so he was fasting for a lifestyle change and, and he went in there very much uh, concerned and focused on the word of God and, and so he, he on was the law uh, on the law and uh, but then he came out of that uh, desert 40 days of fasting, his lifestyle change, he became a man of the spirit. And, uh, mm. it, and so he went to the temple uh, after that, uh, Luke 4, verse uh, 18, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and uh, to proclaim release to the captives. And he also went down in the 19th verse and say to proclaim, listen to me, to proclaim the favorable year of the oh, Lord. Lord. Now, up until then, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people thought God was <laughs> mad and upset at them and uh, a lot of things going on in the Old Testament. But when Jesus made that proclamation, there was a change. He said, this is a favorable year. The favor is available for all of us. Favor, amen, amen. Favor is favor. for all of us. And that's what we need. We need that favor, or amen, favor or grace. And uh, Romans 11, verse 6 uh, says if uh, his grace or his favor is not it's not by works for if it was by, by works it wouldn't be grace it wouldn't be favor but so what he has for us is favor uh, God's in a good mood I wanted to, uh, yes, to proclaim I mean, uh, that God is in a good mood and he this is the favorable year of the Lord this is the year that he's showing forth his favor and, and we all need to receive his favor and and, and we need uh, I, I time with the Lord, a, uh, just something, a connection that takes us from a pathway that will not achieve our miracle to the uh, change trajectory so that we receive our miracle. Amen. I, Amen. I've seen a lot of people that were loved, loved of the Lord and uh, following on to know the Lord, but but they didn't have the right trajectory to receive that miracle. And, and what you need is that tipping point in there to get the miracle. Uh, and th that's what I'm trying to explain to us today, that uh, the miracle that you want, the goal that you have, whether it's today or whether it's down the road, uh, mm -hmm. that it's possible and it's feasible because this is the favorable year of the Lord. Amen. God is Amen. releasing his favor upon us. Now, the third type of tipping point I want to talk about is prayer. Uh, because that can change things. That can change your whole trajectory. Yeah, you. And uh, I want to go back to Elijah because I, I really love Elijah. I really love talking about Elijah. And we know that the reason he stopped the rain was because the people were uh, uncertain about who God was. And, and so this is a real demonstration that uh, the people that are close to God, they're the ones proclaiming the truth. 
Now, what uh, Elijah did, uh, he called all of the people of Israel together up on Mount Carmel, and he had a competition because they didn't know whether Baal was God or whether the Lord God was God. Yeah. And so uh, he said, well, whoever answers by fire, yes. whichever God answers by fire, he's going to be the real one. So he had 450 prophets of Baal there and just Elijah on the other side. So this is a competition. So all day, uh, the prophets of Baal tried to get fire to come down, but they never did. And so here's a prayer beginning in verse 36 and 37. I'm talking about a prayer can be a tipping point. And uh, uh, Elijah prayed a very simple, simple prayer. There's just two, two verses in that uh, passage. And he said, uh, uh, Lord uh, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, uh, let this people know uh, that you are God and that I am your servant and I've done these things at your command. And now answer me. So what was the answer? He's looking well, for fire, fire to come to down. Come down. And, and so, and and uh, let these people know that you're turning their heart to you. Simple prayer, short prayer. There weren't any ifs, ands, or buts about it. It was there. Yeah. And when he prayed that prayer, the fire fell from heaven. Mm. Uh, hallelujah. And, and, and it consumed the, uh, the burn offering mm -hmm. and the stones and the sand and the water and everything just consumed it up and the people fell down and uh, worshiped the Lord and said the Lord is God the Lord is God hallelujah is God. hallelujah is God. and so when they 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 got their hearts settled in that time and that's what it was all about and that's what his prayer was about to get the people's hearts settled uh, turn their hearts back to God and when he said uh, turn their heart back to God he did. God turned their heart back to God. So a prayer can be a tipping point. Uh, and uh, uh, so the nation turned its heart back to God and away from Baal. Uh, and so that was a tipping point, that prayer. Uh, and you can pray a prayer that will be a tipping point. You, you might not reach uh, the miracle that you want without a tipping point, but you can pray uh, or you can have somebody pray with you or for you. And, and that can be a tipping point. It takes you away uh, from this area of doubt and unbelief to an area where you're going to receive uh, your miracle. So Amen. prayers are very important, uh, important tipping points. So what I've been talking about today is just simply this, that uh, sometimes we uh, are on a path where we're loving the Lord, growing closer to the Lord, but we have goals of uh, miracles that we want to receive and we may not be on the right path to receive those miracles and that's when we need a tipping point and i've talked about three different kinds but there are a lot of other kinds uh a tipping point you've got to uh hear prophetic word and when you hear a prophetic word with a call to action you do it and you'll get your miracle or, or you can um, make a proclamation uh, because you've heard whispered in your ear uh, what God wants you to do, and you begin to proclaim that from the rooftop, and uh, that will be a tipping point and get you in the right direction and in the right trajectory so that you can receive your miracle, a divine intervention in your life, and it may be a healing or it may be just a, a change in uh, that you know what your purpose is and are able to fulfill your destiny, mm -hmm. so a lot of different kinds of miracles. Uh, maybe you need peace in your household or peace in your mm -hmm. mind uh, that can be a, a divine intervention in that and you Amen. and you Amen. might need uh, this tipping point and the third thing i've talked about is a prayer another example of a of a tipping point in prayer that I like to think about is Daniel Daniel was quite a guy oh amen I love Daniel they they, uh, they, they promoted Daniel <laughs> above a lot of, of uh, people and uh, he prayed a prayer I believe that was a tipping point and uh, the enemies of Daniel tried to uh, uh, get him and, and put him in a, a bad uh, light in with his God, I mean, with his uh, king. king, but uh, they never could find anything on Daniel to to uh, put, throw him in prison. And so all they could come up with, and because he had integrity in his heart, so all they could come up with was that he was praying uh, to a God, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Lord God. And so they said, okay, let's have the king write a, a decree 
sign a decree that no one can pray to any god except the king mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. what i see here is that when uh, in daniel chapter uh, 6 verse 10 when daniel knew that the decree had been signed okay so let's just put this into perspective anybody that prayed that's what the decree was if you prayed to any god other than the king you're going to be thrown in the lion's den well, I can imagine uh, Daniel like this, that he's ready to go. He's out there waiting on the king to sign that decree. And as soon as he hears that the decree has been signed, this is a tipping point for Daniel. Uh, he knows that he, if he prays, he's going to be thrown in the lion's den. And so I can just see him. He's out here waiting, waiting. Oh, let me know. I'm ready to run, ready to run. And when the decree was signed that you couldn't pray, he ran home. Or ran into his house, threw up in all the windows, let everybody see that he got down on his knees and prayed to God. Well, what did his enemies do? They came and got him. But that was a tipping point. <laughs> uh, God saw that Daniel wanted to pray as soon as the, Hallelujah! As the decree was signed that he couldn't pray. And uh, so the enemies got him and eventually got thrown into the lion's den. But you know, he'd already had his tipping point he prayed when they said you couldn't pray and uh the li the lions didn't eat him that you'd say well they weren't hungry oh no they were hungry god shut their mouth uh and so he sat there all night i believe he just uh put his head up on a pillow of a, of a lion's mane fluffed it up and then just laid his head on it and the next morning the king said well i couldn't sleep well oh, daniel slept <laughs> and so uh, so you're still alive. So they got Daniel out and they threw mm -hmm. all of it, Daniel's enemies into the lion den and the lions lion ate them up. Were, uh, they were hungry. Yes, they, they ate were all hungry. of those people up. Yep. They couldn't eat one up. They couldn't <laughs> eat Daniel up uh, because God shut their mouth. But the next day they ate all of these other people up. So that's a tipping point right there about prayer. Prayer, that's a tipping yes, point. I mean. Kept him from being consumed by the lions mm -hmm. in the lion den. Mm -hmm. And all of his enemies were destroyed mm -hmm. out, out of that uh, tipping point right there. So I've given you some examples. And I want you to know that everything's possible with God. If you need a miracle, it's possible. And Amen. I hope these will be helpful tools for you. Amen.